Hello and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Steven and today is Tuesday, April 30th. Gogoro, the global leader in battery swapping for scooters and motorcycles, just can't seem to slow down. The company announced plans for a major partnership that will greatly expand the use of its swappable battery standard and not just for scooters anymore. Gogoro formed a new partnership with Japanese giant Sumitomo Corporation to accelerate Gogoro's global business expansion. The agreement is set to provide Sumitomo access to Gogoro's smart batteries and battery swapping system to allow the companies to expand their mobility business and second life battery use cases. It's hard to overstate some Mitomo's magnitude owning over 900 subsidiary companies with 80,000 employees. With a reach across broad industries including automotive, transportation, construction, and diverse urban development, Sumitomo is poised to help drastically expand the use of Gogoro's swappable battery standard. Many people think of Gogoro as an electric scooter company, but Gogoro is really more of an energy platform. Sure, the company is famous for its fashion forward and high performance electric scooters, but the Gogoro swappable battery standard is the key to Gogoro's success. The batteries are designed to power not just electric scooters, but also many other devices. That's why partnerships are a key part of Gogoro's growth model, leveraging the success of the batteries in its electric scooters to position them for even more far-flung energy uses. Just after laying off more than 10% of its global workforce, Tesla is laying off even more employees, including senior executives and longtime veterans of the company, most notably the entire supercharging team and the executives responsible for negotiating NAC's adoption across the industry. The layoffs have been finalized through an email from CEO Elon Musk to executives stating that six-year veteran Rebecca Tanucci, Tesla's senior director of EV charging, would be leaving the company on Tuesday along with nearly all of her 500-person charging team. Tanucci was responsible for Tesla's Tesla's EV charging business, including supercharging, which means that the cutting of the supercharger team may reflect a change in direction for Tesla. Tesla has been very successful at getting manufacturers to adopt its NAX plug, an effort led by Tanusi, which got her onto the Time 100 climate list, leading many to suggest that it will be able to run a profitable energy delivery business for a long time to come. Relieving the team of its duty may signal a reduction in build-out of the system. Musk said that he wants Tesla to be absolutely hardcore about the headcount reduction, saying that executives whose subordinates don't absolutely pass the excellent, necessary, and trustworthy test would find themselves relieved of duty as well, suggesting that he wants those executives to fire more employees or be fired themselves. Nevada Utility NV Energy's largest battery energy storage system sits on a former coal-fired power plant site and will save customers a ton of money. Swiss U.S. battery energy storage specialist Energy Vault built a 220-megawatt, 440-megawatt-hour grid-tied raid gardener battery energy storage system in Moapa, Nevada, 50 miles northeast of Las Vegas on the site of the former 557-megawatt coal-fired raid gardener generating station, which was demolished in 2019. The energy storage system stores and dispatches excess wind and solar power. It's charged and discharged daily and dispatches stored renewable energy at peak consumption hours to help meet demand. From about 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., solar energy starts to ramp off as the sun's going down. That's the time when the batteries sell their excess energy. In the past, this peak energy has cost $250 a unit. Now, with renewable energy storage, this can be delivered closer to $100 a unit. Customers will see a 15-20% to 20 reduction in their utility bills by the end of the year. Tesla Megapack has been selected to power a massive new record-breaking 1.3 gigawatt hour battery system from Neon in Australia. This project is a second stage of the Kali battery project. Francis Neon is already building the first stage with Tesla's Megapack 2XLs. The first stage consists of 224 Tesla Megapacks 2XLs units for 219 megawatts, 877 megawatt hours of capacity. Today, Neon announced that it has received the contract for the second stage, which is even going to be bigger with a 340 41 megawatt, 1,363 megawatt hour capacity and consisting of 348 Tesla Megapack 2XL units. It is expected to become the new largest battery system in Australia and one of the biggest in the world. The second stage is expected to be operational at the end of 2025 with the ability to charge and discharge 20% of the average demand of the network. 
Ford is now taking orders for the newest version of its commercial EV, the E-Transit, with up to 32% more range and faster charge times. The 2024 E-Transit's 89 kilowatt hour battery provides an estimated range of up to 159 miles. Ford says that makes it capable of new use cases such as refrigerated delivery. The enhanced E-Transit also features dual onboard chargers that delivers a 22% faster charge time. The E-Transit also has improved DC charging with 176 kilowatt charging capability. When connected to a suit Suitably quick charger, this means a 2024 e Transit can get 67 miles of range in 15 minutes. All new e Transits will have access to Ford's new NAX adapter in addition to its CCS port. The e Transit starts at $51,095. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Dean mentioned how big of a deal solid state battery deployment is in the EV world. This development means we may experience a large leap in battery capabilities with next gen EVs. The transition to electric is really picking up momentum and it'll be interesting to see what new use cases pop up with this big upgrade in battery tech. Thank you for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Steven and have a great day.